So we finally come to the penultimate moment in our exercise. This is where we want it to be. We have a solution with an unknown concentration. Okay, so I've got a test tube that contains my unknown. We're trying to find out the concentration. What you now have, after doing your serial dilution, is five tubes. One through five. Each of those tubes has a concentration that is known. And each concentration is half of the previous concentration. is 2.5 milligrams per milliliter. Then for four, we've got 1.25 milligrams per milliliter. And then for the last one, we've got 0 0.625 milligrams per milliliter, as previously discussed. OK, so we've got these five tubes and these five concentrations. So what you then did was you took each of these tubes and you placed it in the spectrophotometer. And as you did, you got an absorbance reading. Okay, so what we do then, we have our table. And we have our concentration. Actually, we'll have our tube first. So we'll have our tube number. We'll have our concentration of that tube. And then we'll have our absorbance reading. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, ten milligrams per milliliter. Five milligrams per milliliter. Two point five milligrams per milliliter. One point two five milligrams per milliliter, and then zero point six two five milligrams per milliliter. Now. I'm going to give arbitrary absorbances for each of these. These may not match what you got. This is simply going to be an example of how you would use this information to figure out the absorbance, I'm sorry, the concentration of your unknown. Okay, so let's say that for 10, we got an absorbance of 0 0.75. For 5 milligrams per milliliter, let's say we got an absorbance of 0 0.4. For um, 2.5 milligrams per milliliter, let's say that we got an actual absorbance of 0 0.18. For 1.25 milligrams per milliliter, let's say we got an absorbance of 0 0.05. And then for 0 0.625 milligrams per milliliter, let's say that we got an absorbance of 0 0.02. Okay, so here are my values. I got these absorbances, and I got these concentrations from my serial dilution. These absorbances were obtained using the spectrophotometer. So again, I knew the concentration of my starting value. I calculated each of the corresponding uh, concentrations by the way I showed you previously. And I got these absorbances by taking each tube and placing it into the spectrophotometer after I properly calibrated it using the blank. Now, let's say I put my unknown into the spectrophotometer and it gives me an absorbance of 0 0.32. Okay. So, what you could do initially is potentially say, okay, well, 0 0.32 is somewhere between these two, so it's somewhere between 2.5 and 5, which is definitely at least closer to an idea of where this concentration falls than when we only had a single test tube and we're trying to determine it. But let's not jump the gun. Okay? Let's instead use this information to give us something that will give us a better approximation for the concentration of this than just saying it's between 2.5 and 5. Okay. So, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to construct what's known as a standard curve using this information, and I'm going to use that standard curve to then 
estimate the concentration of my unknown based off of this absorbance. So I'm going to put absorbance up here for my unknown at 0 0.32. And I'm going to erase this so that I can now draw my standard curve. Okay, so you use graph paper. I'm going to just use the board. And I need to label my axes. Okay, so down here, my axis is going to be concentration in milligrams per milliliter. I'm going to go up to a value of 10. 5 is halfway between 0 and 10. Okay, and then I'll fill in the blanks. Okay. My graph obviously will not be drawn to scale since I'm not drawing it on graph paper, but yours hopefully will be since you had graph paper. Okay, so there's my concentrations. And now, let's say that the maximum absorbance I need to go up to over here is 1, 0 0.5. So this is my absorbance, 0 0.5, 0, which means right here is 0.25, right here is 0 0.75, and that'll give me a good enough approximation for the time being. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to plot each of these points, because each of these values for 2, 1, 2, 2, 2, 3, 2, 4, and 2, 5 represents a point somewhere on this graph, just like reading a map. Okay? So what I'll need to do is I'll need to take my absorbance value and I'll need to take my concentration value for each tube and I'll need to find where those two meet on the graph and that gives me my point. So for 10 milligrams per milliliter, I'm looking for where it meets with 0.75. So I'm going to come here and it's going to meet right around here. So there's my point representing test tube 1. And I'm going to do the exact same thing for all of the others. Now I'm going to have to approximate because I don't have values for each of these points. In other words, I don't have 0.4 on this graph. So I have to approximate. Again, you have graph paper, so you should be able to do it a little easier. 2.5, which is between 2 and 3, and 0.18, which is below 0.25. So probably somewhere right around here. Okay, then 1.25. So probably right around here at 0 0.05, which is going to be really, really low. So probably right there. And finally, 0.625, which is a little over halfway, and 0.02, which is really, really low. Okay. So I now have my five points on this graph. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a line of best fit. Okay. So a line of best fit does not pass through all five points. And I don't want it to. I want this line to represent this data as best it can in a linear fashion. So I want a straight line that best represents this data. What that means is that some of these points will be passed through, others will not. Okay, but that line is the most important aspect to this entire graph, not connecting all five dots. Okay? So if I use a line of best fit, it is going to best represent the data, so it's probably going to look something similar to this. Notice that it did not pass through most of the points, actually. And this is probably what you saw in lab as well. Okay. So this is my line of best fit, which is part of my standard curve. So this is my standard curve based off of the data I obtained from my serial dilutions and their accompanying absorbances. Now, how are we going to use this? Well, this line best represents this data, which means this line is a linear representation to the best of our ability of the correlation between absorbance and concentration. In other words, I can use this line if given a particular absorbance to determine the relative concentration of that absorbance that corresponds to it. Or if I'm given a specific concentration, I can find out what absorbance correlates to that concentration, okay, or corresponds. So for my unknown, I had an absorbance of 0 0.32. So what I would do, 
and this is what you would do with your unknown. Whatever absorbance you got, you're going to come over here on your absorbance axis. And you're going to find on your absorbance axis where that absorbance is. So mine is probably right around here. Okay, so this is my unknown absorbance, which was 0 0.32. What you will then do is you will go across using a ruler, which I'm not at this point in time. You'll go across and you'll find that point on your line of best fit. Okay. So I've gone across and I found where on my line of best fit that point was and I will then come down from that point on the line and I will find where that is in regards to the concentration axis. So when I come down off of that line of best fit from that point that I found using my absorbance, I now find it falls somewhere here which most likely means that my absorbance of my unknown in this particular instance is, or I'm sorry, my concentration of my unknown is then apparently 3.8 or 3.9 milligrams per milliliter. Okay, so again, I took my unknown absorbance, I plotted that point on my line of best fit, and then found where that correlated from the line of best fit to my axis for my concentration. And it came out here, which means most likely my concentration for my unknown is approximately 3.9 milligrams per milliliter. So success, what we have effectively done is we have taken our serial dilutions, we've generated corresponding absorbances for each of them, we've used the concentration and absorbance to plot the points, generate a line of best fit, and using that line of best fit, we've been able to now determine an approximate value based off of the absorbance of our unknown of the concentration for that unknown sample. Okay. So that's what we did in this lab.